are you going? It's awesome to have you with us for another episode of In Focus Recouched. We've got a great series of highlights lined up for you today, an historic Bible, tips for blended families, and some great music from Gavin Chatelier. You're going to love it. Well, let's get straight into it then. Check out this interview with the Reverend Justin Moffat, who brought in a Bible that is at least two centuries old. It's great to have Justin Moffat with us. He's a senior minister at St. Philip's Anglican Church in Sydney. Uh, Justin, thanks so much for being with us. We've just been through the Australia Day celebration. I think it's, it's great to have you because your parish is the oldest parish in Australia, isn't yeah, that's it? That's right, yes, yeah, exactly. It's great to be here, James. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, uh, when the first fleet came in in mm -hmm. 1788 to Sydney Harbour after trying Botany Bay, right. Uh, they uh, they landed the first fleet and uh, they eventually said, look, let's put a church up on the hill. That's what they did, right? They Superb. they said, you know, that's the highest point. And right. um, so they put St. Phillips up on the hill. So how did they end up, I guess, how long after they were here was a church established? Yeah. And how soon after they arrived did they have their first church service? Yeah, well, there'd be a couple of stages. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is that they arrived off the first fleet on January 26, 1788. Uh, it took them a week to kind of get their feet, if I can sure. put it this way. And then uh, Richard Johnson, who mm -hmm. I'll talk about in a few moments' time if you'd like me to, Richard Johnson was the chaplain on the First Fleet. Okay. And he, um, uh, he held the first Christian service on the 3rd of February, 1788, under what they call a great tree. This is right. what we've been to. We don't know exactly where, or we do know uh, roughly where, but it was under a great tree. And uh, and uh, and preach the gospel for the first time. So, did the government send over uh, Reverend Johnson with the with the, with the convicts, essentially? Yeah. Look, I, I'm not exactly sure of the um, of whether the I don't think the government sent him, mm -hmm. but I think as the planning for the settlement of the colony uh, uh, was being planned, alongside of the government's planning was a group of people who wanted. The gospel of Jesus Christ preached. Mm -hmm. People like um, John Newton, for example, who wrote oh. Amazing Grace. How right. sweet the sound. Very um, famous. <laughs> and uh, William Wilberforce and others that belonged. So, and William Wilberforce was the parliamentarian behind the abolition of slavery. Of so slavery, also right. a very, very critical Christian voice in, in the UK at a the time. A critical Christian voice and an evangelical, interestingly, right. and an evangelical Anglican hmm. or Church of England. Right. And so, of course, it being an English settlement, they had to send over their Church of England uh, 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 chaplain, and they 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 invited Richard Johnson mm -hmm. to come on the first fleet with him. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, you have brought a couple books here, and mm. I, I want you to to introduce you to them. Sure. Uh, to us, uh, us to them. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'll introduce the books to you and to that's your it, listeners. That's, that's, what I, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so Richard Johnson was given two, well, more than two books, but at least these two books mm -hmm. when he came. In fact, he came with quite a lot of books, but these two are two that have survived. Mm. This is a prayer book, All right. uh, an Anglican prayer book. It was... Uh, the words were written in 1662, mm -hmm. although this book, of course, is 1786. Right. But uh, the, 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 the words originated in 1662 with the, the Anglican uh, Book of Common Prayer. Right. And this is the Bible. Right. King James, uh, you know, it's 400 years. Uh, right. But this is Johnson's Bible and Johnson's Prayer Book. So this is, these are actually the Bible and the prayer book that the first minister who gave the first Christian uh, service here in Australia used. Yeah, he brought them with him, and we still have them. It's Can incredible. I show you a few things? Sure, here? absolutely. Right? Fascinating. Um, which do you like first? You get a choice here. Well, let's what, go with what the Bible listeners first. Want? <laughs> <laughs> let's go with the Bible first. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, okay, so first it's King James. So you'll notice it's um, you know if you uh, uh, you'll notice it's uh, it's uh, old language, etc. Sure, of course, it's King James. So it's got all its uh, footnotes off to the side. When Johnson first came out on the first fleet, he um, preached a sermon under the great tree, 3rd right. of February, 1788, and uh, and he opened up. And I don't know, how, I don't know how he chose it, mm -hmm. or why he chose it. We can only guess, mm -hmm. but he chose as his first text, Psalm 116, verse 12, which is right here. What shall I render unto the Lord for all His benefits towards me? Wow, that's incredible. incredible. My son is seven years old, mm. and I read that verse to him. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And I said to him, what do you think that means? 
and um, you know he's a he's a quick kid, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he stops and pauses and he says, "What shall I give mm -hmm. back to God for all His things He's given me?" Yeah, beautiful, and uh, which is stunning. It wouldn't be the text that you'd necessarily choose when you were preaching to convicts who'd just been transported <laughs> thousands of, really, to, in their way of thinking, to the end of the world. No, right, a dark passage, a kind of, um, you know, it was a terrible journey, a hell, really. Right. And they got off to build a nation. And Johnson says, my text today, we don't know the exact, Sure. we don't have the, the exact transcript. text. But sure. But my text today is Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I give back mm. to God for all the things he's given me? And I asked my son, by the way, what's the answer? Mm. And he stopped and he paused again and he said, nothing. You know, nothing in my hands I bring. I, I can't give anything back for all the good things God's given me. Mm. But you're right about the first fleet. Imagine them hearing that passage. I imagine some of them will be saying, well, what? What did he give me? <laughs> what? Right. And I don't know what Johnson said, but I presume he talked about the grace of God even in dark passage, the grace right. of God even in suffering, the grace of God even with sinners. You know, I mean, mm. this is a group of people that, you know, are convicted of crimes. Many, mm. of course, un, 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 unwarranted crimes, right. but and this it's is also a very group, severe punishments. Severe as well. punishments, right. and here's, here's Johnson preaching grace. And uh, the next verse, of course, is I will. Uh, take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And mm. perhaps he said to them, you know, straighten up. Straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe the gospel, believe in the grace and of God. Interestingly, uh, this, this Bible is also uh, autographed by, by a number of the uh, British royals, uh, Charles and Di at the front there, Elizabeth, uh, our current monarch, and uh, on both trips. Right, so uh, one of my favorite signatures, certainly the Queen's signature is right. terrific. And Charles and Diana, uh, you know, uh, anybody who, you know, is kind of under 30 loves that or yeah. about 30. Uh, but I do, I love Albert's signature here. He opened Parliament House in 1927 and was given this Bible to sign. And Albert, of course, is, uh, became, oh, I'm, I'm going to King George the, the fifth, fifth, I believe, who uh, was a Bertie from the King's Speech, the, the recent film movie, that right. the Oscar-winning film, yeah. and his brother Edward, who abdicated, you know, having married uh, Wallace Simpson, Wallace Simpson mm -hmm. was here in 1920, and he also signed it as well. So this really, this is really a fascinating history. If people want to learn more about this history, you have a special service coming up uh, this Sunday, yeah. and uh, and that's going to be at St Philip's. Yeah, St Philip's. Actually, all our services. We run three services: 8:30, 10:15 and 6 p.m. But all services mm -hmm. will focus in on the history of Richard Johnson and the First Fleet and the preaching of the gospel uh, in the first place when they, when they came off. So all services will remember the anniversary of the first Christian service. A good thing to do around Australia Day. Well, obviously we're nowhere near Australia Day now, yeah. but it's still so interesting to learn. I mean, that connection that Australia has with Amazing Grace and William Wilberforce and all of that. Yeah, and I thought it was great too how, you know, Justin Moffat was a really enthusiastic storyteller mm, you know, yeah. in, in retelling that history for us. Fascinating. Hey, we're due for an ad break now, but stay with us. We'll be back in just a sec. We live our lives running around, rarely stopping to ask ourselves where we're going and what our final destination is. In the end, our lives become little more than routine. Step beyond and discover a path that offers comfort, love and hope. Visit hopeoffer.com forward slash step beyond or call 1300 300 389 for your free copy today. Onions add great sweetness and flavour and a good base to any curry. Going to add some ginger, some garlic. Look at that, nice and chunky. So we've got our spices, gives it kind of a Sri Lankan feel. Add some tomatoes, tomato paste, some honey. Roasted vegetables in these kind of dishes are always great. If we add some creaminess to it, and that dish is now finished, ready to hit the table. I recommend you to give it a try and it's so, so easy. When that gate opens, this could be your last and final ride. You could get stomped on, 
hurt or killed. That's the danger and the thrill of bull riding. But let me tell you, there is nothing like an eight second ride. Getting on the back of a bull ready to ride, sweat runs down your back, your heart's pumping. You feel nervous, you always do. I don't know a bull rider who doesn't. You have to be totally committed to ride. Bull riding is not a game. You can't ride a bull half-hearted. It's all or it's nothing. To receive a free DVD of the documentary Beyond Talk, visit hopeoffit.com forward slash talk or call 1300 300 389. It's a classic line and a tragic one in many cases. You're not my real dad. You can't tell me mm. what to do. Yeah, it's just one of the many challenges faced by blended families. Yeah. Let's take a look at this segment on blended families with Daniel Sinnott and Trafford Fisher. Now, today we're talking about blended families opposed to families in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> Blender families is a nice way to describe it, Danielle, because yeah. I think a lot of blended families feel as if they are in a blender. In the mill. It's yep. a topsy-turvy, it's a torn around world. A lot of blended yep. families do it well. They do that joining where two families merge yep. together, either from divorce or separation, or one of the partners have been widowed, yep. and they rebuild the family. There's all the excitement, and yes, yep. you know, they fall in love. There's a honeymoon period. Well, yep. one of the tricky things is for blended families, sometimes then there's not a, a honeymoon period. A couple without children go away, they come back, there's just them. But if a couple who get married and have children if they do get a chance to get yeah. away, they come back, it's bang, straight into family. Yeah. They don't have that chance to, to do that honeymoon thing in the way we normally Absolutely. picture it. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's part of the blending image. All of a sudden, boom, oh, they're in the family happening and there's kids, you know. It's all. It, it can be really challenging, really can. And I think it, it requires the parents to mm -hmm. do some, a lot of open, honest communication. Yeah. Sharing together. Hey, this is this is what it's been like for me as a parent. This is how I've done the parenting thing, the discipline yeah. thing. You know, hearing from their partner, what's that been like for you? Now we've got both of us doing the parenting thing. How's that going to work? And and how do you think is the best way to go through that? Like, take us through Trafford some suggestions for parents when they're in that situation. They've got married, they're bringing two families together. Um, obviously in three minutes, you know, we don't have the time to go through mm. all of those. Mm. Um, but give I us... guess one of the issues, Danielle, is when, when uh, say Susie, who is the daughter of the lady, yeah. comes in, all of a sudden she says, well, he's not my father. You know, yeah. so why should I obey him? Why yeah. should I do what he wants <laughs> me to do? One, He's telling it? me to do this, this, and so she goes to my mum, you know, and that calls for some really good negotiation. I think it's a lot yeah. of respect, some compassion, patience, understanding. Let's not rush this. Let's take it steady. So a lot of building some elastic. Yeah. Let's let's not lock everything down. Let's just build in some elastic in this yeah. and allow for some negotiation time. Recognise, I think, take on board yeah. there's going to be some pain here. It's normal. Yeah. You know, if we're frightened by all that pain, which you know, we may well be, but if we can say, hey, let's build into our thinking there's going to be some tough times. It's all okay. We can deal with this. We're big and keep that open, honest negotiation yeah. going And the together. communication open. Yeah. Do you think emotional connection's important in that? Yeah, yeah, especially for the new couple. Mm -hmm. They can be so torn with the family issues that they forget to take care of this new marriage. Yeah. So in, in all the parenting deal, they need to say, hey, we're a new couple, let's do this. We, we need to focus and spend time for ourselves, build this marriage Wonderful. while they keep connecting the kids. There's so much in this, Danielle, and I, I, I uh, encourage all families to stay with the journey if that's yeah. the journey they're taking stay with it it's all going to be okay yeah a it great way win. to look at it i it think trafford it is a journey isn't it and a journey takes time yeah, but it can win it can, they win. can do it very yeah. good yeah it's good to see that there is hope isn't it mm. and there are strategies that families can put into place that will help them through the rough patches yeah it's good advice hey we'll take a short break now but we'll be back in a moment We're going to start with some soybeans. Use some chickpeas, a onion, we have a teaspoon of salt, slice some tomatoes, slice some cucumber, some red onion just to give it a bit of freshness. So just make little falafels like this. They just smell amazing. Let's make our tahini dressing. Let's get in some tomatoes. 
cucumbers, some falafels. Drizzle some of this lovely dressing. All you need to do is roll it up and you've got a delicious lunch for your family. Father, I can't connect the dots through the little that I understand. What words can I say to reach you? How can I know that you are there, listening, hearing, caring? My words are broken, weak, and powerless. But I know your power is limitless. What can I say? I'm born in a place called Tom in Sudan, in Barakazal State. And I was born in the time when the war was happening. SPLA was formed, and when it was formed, it brought a lot of tension. The Arabs came and captured my town, and people were killed seriously. The houses were burned, the cattle were killed, and some families raped. One day, we were asked how many kids are willing to be trained, like to be soldiers. Everyone was interested. No one was forced. For me, my desire was to revenge what happened in my village, and I said, OK, I'm going to learn how to fire a gun. We were all happy. We couldn't sleep that night, because we know tomorrow we're going to be trained. To receive a free DVD of the documentary Beyond Guilt, visit hopeoffer.com forward slash guilt or call 1300 300 389. Hi, welcome back. Now you're going to love this next segment. We were talking about the challenges facing blended families before, but this next interview makes it pretty clear that even those so-called perfect Christian families you see up the front of church mm. have their own struggles. Yeah, oh, this one was great. Let's meet them then all over again. Gavin and Trudy Chatelier. Trudy and Gavin Chatelier, how are you? Good, thanks, Ken. Of, right. of the Chatelier family singers. <laughs> I, I don't know how many years ago it was, I, I sat in church and, and there was you, uh, Gavin, with, what was it, 16 kids? But how many is it you've got? <laughs> oh, back then, probably six kids. Uh, six, know? sorry, yeah, six, yeah. six kids. Now and, seven. Yep, yeah. and, and Trudy there in, in the front row, keeping a, mm -hmm. a motherly eye on proceedings and making yeah. sure it all, all went yeah. according to plan. Yes. How, how many years did you... Um, you travelled and performed together, didn't you? How many mm -hmm. years did you do that? Our music ministry now, uh, we'd be going, like Jessica's now 22. Okay. So um, she How was about was she three been? years old when, when I started hitting wow. the stage, you know, with her coming up and so doing do the some stuff with me. So that's 19 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 19 you years you've yeah, been 20. sort of performing as a that's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and for how many of those years, Trudy, were you actually like caravanning around Australia and, and travelling and you know, providing distance uh, education yep. for your kids and all that sort of stuff. Well, they were always doing distance education um, mm. because we would just travel on weekends and different things like that, not so mm -hmm. much big trips. So then you'd leave on Friday and that sort of thing. So it was hard to keep them in school because mm -hmm. you'd be unsettling them all the time. But sure. probably about 10 years of that, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, 10 yeah. years, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah of travelling, yeah. you know, within Australia and overseas. And, and yeah, how did that go from a, a parenting point of view? I mean, you know, being cooped up in a van together. At, Organised chaos, Ken. Organised. <laughs> Six kids. Yeah, yeah. That's Incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and I think you know when a family you know gets up the front mm -hmm. and sings together, um, people look at that and they go, wow, you mm -hmm. know, what an inspiration, you know. Isn't it good to see a family doing something together? You're making a, a positive you know contribution. Did did it feel like that from from your angle? You know, when when you were there. Absolutely. I mean, it, it was for us, but also sobering mm. because we, you know, I, I always tried to be transparent on stage. I, there was one line that I had, is, you know, if you had a video camera mm. in our home, you'd see that we have our ups and downs mm -hmm. too, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People want to put you up on a pedestal, mm -hmm. but we, we let people know we had struggles and yeah, things like yeah. that. And, and it was only because of the music and the prayer and the family worship mm. that kept focusing mm -hmm. us back so that we could hit the stage together, you know, happily. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's I actually have an, an insight, inside knowledge yeah. about this a little bit because I'm the oldest of five kids, there you okay. go. and my parents were both into music, and yeah. we quite a few times, mm -hmm. you know, were up the front of different churches playing yes. and performing. And, yeah. Oh, it's the Kingston family, yeah. <laughs> the Von Kingston yes. family singers. They used to call us. They, you probably got a few Von Trapp jokes mm -hmm. too, haven't you? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 family singers, like the Von Trapp family that, singers. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. And and yeah. people sort of have this vision mm. of oh, mm -hmm. oh the, the perfect Christian family yes. and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and we all we're all rolling our eyes. Oh, Dad, these daggy songs, you know, yeah, yeah. all this country <laughs> folk sort of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Right. That's what you do, isn't right. it, Gavin? Yes. Country <laughs> sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was. That's how I saw um, music ministry. Only Jesus music ministry, you know, mm -hmm. focused on that. But we, you know, I would um, sing these songs that I knew and I loved. So I teach the children, mm. and um, you know, they they came on board in their younger years. They're yeah. going through a lot of transition now, where they're discovering their own music and style. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's like that behind the scenes, you know. They, they, I didn't have to bribe them or anything, mm. you know, because it was part of our, our home family worship. So we, we, I'd a lot of times say it's not a concert when when we do our programs. Yeah. This is family worship, and right. I think that's where the kids and all of us were focused yeah, um, yeah. in a different way, you know. Mm. Dad singing. Um, a singing dad. That's the yeah. way I saw myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, singing. so you guys obviously played a lot of churches around the place. Yes. Uh, I saw you play at a community festival mm -hmm. right. one time. Right. You also went to the Tamworth Country Music Festival. Yeah. But you do that yeah. pretty much every year, don't you? Yeah. Still? yeah that, mm -hmm. that, that's five years running now, and I've, I've got my belt buckle and everything. I'm proud yep. of that. Big and boots out in the street. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Invested in the boots and, and yep. put the hat on and do do our country music, the gospel stuff. I also sing for, for weddings, a lot of Christian weddings, so yeah. um, I do love songs, and so I've recorded mm -hmm. five albums there too, and yeah. Um, yeah, we're in the street for about six to eight hours. So how, how, how do people respond to you, like when you're in the street, you're there with just a mainstream, yeah. secular audience, yes. this isn't church people, but right. you're singing gospel songs, what what sort of feedback do you get? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do, I do um, some of the other uh, wholesome love songs mm -hmm. that pull people in, and then it gives me a chance to sort of bridge I've, with I've them. seen your Elvis act, Gavin. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wholesome love songs. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what I tell people is, if you see me do any shaking, that's yeah. for my wife. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so is that okay? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, uh, the, you come to the the teenage years. You know, the kids grow up. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. no longer daddy's little boy and daddy's yes. little girl anymore. Yeah. They yeah. start to develop, yep. you know, lives of their mm -hmm. own. Um, how did how did that impact on on your family, Trudy? It impacted us pretty hard because we had. Um, you know, we were just going along nicely and then you sort of, you start to be challenged in your parenting because mm. you see your child, you know, having uh, their own opinions and different things. Mm -hmm. And for myself, it was a very challenging time because mm. I had to really look at myself and take a step back and say, wow, what am I actually doing here to my children? Because I started you, you, to see You them. had them contained, didn't that's you? That's right, in, that's right, know, all in, in a row. Bus, yeah, that's row. right, you know, all, all organized control. and planned, you know. Yep. And it start, I started to realize, wow, you know, um, I have. To, I can't just put my journey onto my children's, you know, their journey, and mm. um, they have to grow themselves. And yeah. it was a really hard transitioning time for me because it was a letting go, mm. and really handing them over to the Lord and saying, Lord, yeah. they are yours. You take them, yeah. and um, you talk to them and speak to them. I'm here to guide them, mm -hmm. but ultimately, I can't read their motives or their heart or the things they're doing. Mm. This is yours. So wow, sounds yeah. like you really learned a lot. Oh, I did. My yeah. dependence on God has just really. My faith has just exploded yep, yep. and I found that um, yeah just leaning on the Lord more and more yeah. and um, they're, they're, these are good kids aren't they I mean they are good kids they're great kids now. yeah your, no, your grandparents yes yeah, yeah hard-working kids responsible yeah. you know citizens but still and that type tough. of thing letting go is tough yeah. because I think we have as parents our dreams and aspirations and I think even spiritually for our children mm -hmm. we want to see them strong with the Lord and we want to mm -hmm. you know um, and I realized I couldn't give my journey to them. They mm. have to experience hurt, they have to experience life, mm. failure, everything, and then that will shape their journey and their life mm. and their walk with God. Mm. And that was a big learning curve. And I think from me, with my background, I became, I was very protective, mm. very, um, because I'd been hurt, Mm. And you know, different you things had happened to me, insecurities and mm. things like that. You and don't I want had that big, for your kids. That's yeah. right. I had fears, mm. and I didn't want to, yeah, them to be hurt in the same way. Yeah. And the Lord had to teach me, no, they're mine. Wow. Step back, yeah. and more or less, get out of the way and let me take them yeah. because I was in the way. Because the reality yeah. was mm. that when we were responding initially to it, there's no school 
Kent, the teachers, right. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we could see some frustrations with the kids, anger yep. that wasn't characteristic of them. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was a, a concern that we thought, wow, and Trudy and I got on our knees and said, Lord, show us who we are yeah. and who you are. Yeah. And once we learnt a little bit more of that, we started responding differently and wow, you know, the children drew back to us. And, and I sense it's brought you two closer together as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and even, and yeah, even within our marriage, you know, there was times I was judging Gavin's motives, even over his music, everything, you know, things he would come out with and I'd be saying, you know, again, controlling that. You can't yeah. sing that, you can't do that, you know, um, you know and controlling him and yeah. trying to contain him, you know. Yeah. But I've learned that actually he's on his own journey too and the Lord will lead him wow. into where he should be. It's yeah, great to see so. Trudy here, you know, she's always been behind the scenes. Now she can, she speaks at our programs and and um, mm. and I sing, you know, <laughs> and so th yeah. that that um, that conversion for her too. Mm. Um, you I don't know if you want to tell them, but you got rebaptized too out, yeah, of, that got re so out of that experience. It was great yeah. to see her taking her own journey wow. instead of behind me in a lot of ways, mm. hiding behind me. You know? So the the journey yeah. continues and the music yeah. continues. Yes, it's yeah. great. Hey, thanks so much for your time, yeah. uh, Trudy. Hey, and look, I've Gavin got a present for you. Oh. Only Jesus Music Ministry, there's my Oh, here we go. This is your CD. latest CD? Yeah. Gavin Sh is the yeah. kids sing on this, some of these songs uh, too? Not that one, but there's a, quite okay. a few other. Well, this is just you. Yeah, uh, that's Gavin's golden tonsils, they're worth <laughs> listening to. Ever felt like giving up Feel a burden on your shoulders And the friends who shared happy times Don't seem to be around now But he's been there through it all Waiting with arms wide open Take the pain. He was willing to die for you and me. He'll be your friend. Wow, just lovely people, aren't they, Dora? Mm. Yeah, genuine, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Gavin has like a cool voice, a bit Elvis, almost. Almost, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you though, he pulls some great Elvis moves. Very, oh, awesome. very groovy. <laughs> well, that's about all we have time for this week. Thanks so much for joining us on the couch. We're praying for you before every episode that you connect with God through what you see in here. So blessings to you and your family. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.